Okay, I'm making another video response here. I mentioned on the forum that there are multiple ways to do the job of having a 400 by 500 millimeter cut area and a smaller print within that. So I'm gonna show you the other way to do it now. This one is a little bit more complicated, but it's much more versatile. So just follow through on this and I'll show you how to do this. We're gonna create a layout that is exactly the way you want it within those specifications. And we do that with two templates. First, we're gonna change the placement method to freehand mode. And then in freehand, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this template, which is the last thumbnail in every list of thumbnails. And I don't have the sizes already listed in here. So I'm gonna add one at 400 by 500 millimeters. And then I'm going to add one at the other size, which is 297 by 420, I think it was. Um, so now we have a template on top of a template, and it puts them there because we're in freehand mode. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to go into the page editor, this button right here. And while we're in the page editor, you can see that we can select either one of these templates. I can select the bigger one here, and it puts the dots on the bigger one, or I can select this one just by clicking again in here. But to start out, we're just going to center both of these. So I'm going to click on the big one, and under size and location, I'm going to center it on the page. And then I'm going to click on the smaller one and do the same thing, center it. So by centering both of these, it puts the smaller one exactly in the center of the bigger one. And now we have one other thing that we want to do. And I should mention at this point that it's important to add the bigger template first, as I just showed in the video. Don't add the small one first, because the bigger one we want in the back and the smaller one we want on top. And we do that by adding the big one first and then adding the smaller one, as I just showed. So now we're going to select the bigger template. And in the border, we're going to make sure it's a white border. And we're going to add a really large border that will cover the whole template. So I'm just going to put 500 in here because I know that's obviously going to cover the whole template. So that makes this a white template with a regular template on top. So you're going to get a white rectangle with a regular template, which is a placeholder for an image on top of that. Now, the beauty of this is once you get this set up and you know that these are aligned properly, you can drag this like you drag a placemat on a table. Wherever you move this, the other smaller template is going to go with it and stay exactly centered. So you could drag it all the way to the top of the page, drag it to the bottom of the page, and the small template's always going to be exactly centered within that. So I'm going to just drag this to the top of the page because it seemed like that's what you wanted to do. That's as far up as it'll go with the snap that I have in place. But in any case, I dragged it all the way up. This one is still in the middle, and I'm going to click Done. So now we have a big template that's 400 by 500 with a 297 by 420 centered within that. And we've placed it where we want it. And again, on this screen, as long as you drag the large template, the smaller one will move with it and they will stay exactly centered within that. Don't click on this and drag this one, because just like a placemat on a table, if you drag stuff on top of the placemat, you can get it misaligned. But as long as you drag this bottom one like this, they'll stay aligned. So now with it at the top, I'm going to, since I like that layout, I'm going to go here and do Save Current as a Custom Layout. And I'm just going to give it this name because it's easy to find. Um, you can type any name in here you want. I'm going to do Save. And since it's already there, I'll overwrite it. If you want to start using this layout now, I'll say Yes. And at this point, you're working with a placement method that's a layout that you've created. So now, whenever I click the plus on thumbnails, it's going to go into the red template, which is the placeholder. It'll ignore the white one because it'll realize you're just using a white template. So that's how your layout will work. If I add another image, it goes to page two, and it does the same thing.
And again, if you the first time you click, it'll select the large template. But if you click again, okay, now I have the image. And now I can say crop prints. And I can crop out an area that I want in here. Uh, let's say I want just the strawberries. Um, whatever I want to do, click done. And as you can see, we still have a 297 by 420 inside of a white template. Now, let me show you how this prints. Um, go into the driver here, preview before printing. And now if I print this, uh, let me first, I'm going to turn on the cut marks and say corner marks. And as you can see, that will preview when you have uh, a layout selected. So you can see where they're going to appear. The blue line was covering it on that one. But OK, so I've turned on corner marks. And I print with preview turned on in the driver, just so I can show you what the printer is getting. Give it a second to update the driver preview here. And it's done printing, spooling the page. OK, and as you can see, you have the 400 by 500 template at the top of the page where you placed it. And should be a page two. Okay, click and get page two here. Uh, there's page two where we cropped out the strawberries. And again, there's no corner marks on the print. It's on the 400 by 500 just because of the way we set it up. It realizes you have that white template in the background and a print on top of it. So it puts the corner marks on the white template. Uh, so that's the other way to do this. And let me just uh, remove all from here. And I'll go back to something like IntelliCenter. Um, so I'll show you how this works. Now that we've saved that and we've gone through the process, which I said is a little bit more complicated to set up a layout like that. But now that we've done it, we can use it anytime we want. And we don't even have to specify sizes. So even if I add a couple prints first, and then I say, oh, that's not what I want. I actually want that layout that I had created. Just go here, and it shows you the last layout you, you use. So I could just click this. But if that's not the last layout, you can go here to load custom layout and click on the one that you used. Click open. And as you can see, it reformats the prints to that layout because you're now in this layout placement mode which is the custom one you created. So, and as I said, if you if you want to add more prints, I only have two here, but let's add another one of the cat. Just add another one of the cat. Now we get a page three with the cat on it and it conforms to the layout, which is 297 by 420 print inside a 400 by 500 white template that we created using that big border. So this is yet another way to do it, and it allows a lot more customization. So I wanted to show you this method because once you create that layout, it's so easy to use. You can go back to um, IntelliCenter now, and then you can add your prints in IntelliCenter mode. You can switch to IntelliCut, whatever you want to use. But when you're ready to use that layout you created, it's just another placement method. It happens to be a custom one, but that's OK. So go back to that. And it puts two pages in here, because that's how many prints I had. And it conforms to the layout that we chose. But the key here is to put this white template in with that big border that tells it, just fill this whole template with white. And then that becomes a mat. This is basically a mat now. We've turned the template into a mat. And we had a regular template that is a placeholder for prints on top of that. And that makes our layout. So I hope this makes sense. And it's just another way to do it. Thanks for watching.